Hey guys, so I am back with a new video and this is going to be my sixth installment for the Disney Princess Collection and it is going to be Mulan. I actually posted the final illustration for this video on my Facebook page since I wanted you guys to ask me some questions based on the illustration so that I could answer them in this video. And I got a fairly great feedback from you guys so yeah, I'm going to be answering questions based on this specific fashion illustration and let's get started. So the first question is, how do you get inspired? And I'm pretty much just going to be answering this in relation to the illustration that you are seeing on the screen. You guys know that I'm working on Princess Mulan in this video and she is going to be a part of my Disney Princess collection. And that's pretty much a theme that I chose I think it was at the beginning of 2014. And the reason why I chose it is because I have been obsessing over Disney princesses since 2012, I think. That's when I was at my peak or something. And at that time, I was just watching videos, watching movies, learning the songs and singing along to them and all that kind of stuff. So I needed to kind of use that obsession and turn it into an art form, which in this case is a fashion design or a fashion illustration. That, however, is speaking in a more general sense. What you want to do after you've kind of um, chosen a theme, you want to expand on that. And in my case, my theme was Disney princesses and how I kind of expanded on that theme and explored different aspects of it, I suppose, is I tried to find inspiration for every single princess, like I did one for Elsa, for Anna, for Merida, for Rapunzel, for Tiana, and now I am doing one for Mulan, which you guys have seen um, in the previous clips. I was scrolling through images to find, I don't know, something that would spark some kind of creativity or inspiration for an outfit, and that's pretty much like another way of sourcing inspiration. One, you could either look at what you currently like or what you're currently obsessed with. And two is pretty much going on the internet and scrolling through pages and pages of images that um, kind of relate to your theme, if that makes any sense. So pretty much for Mulan, one of her costumes was a warrior or an armor type of clothing. So I used that one and pretty much just searched for Chinese warriors and looked at some images of costumes that I thought would be nice to incorporate into her actual design. And you will pretty much see that how I kind of combined the um, her warrior costume to her traditional um, costume, which she wore at the beginning of the movie. For the pose, I used two things. The first is a template, which you can see on the left-hand side of the screen. I used that one for one of my rough sketches just to kind of make it easier and a lot faster for me to create an entire outfit without having to draw out the body again or like with the proportions and all that. And the second thing that I used is a reference image, which you can see on the right hand side. And I pretty much just got that image from Google search and I used that pose for Mulan. The second question is what materials did you use? For my newer videos, I actually have been listing down the materials that I use for the video. I mean, for the illustration in the description box of the video. So if you watch a new video that I upload, please check the description box for the materials that I use if you wanna know what materials I am using for that specific illustration because it's most likely in there. However, it's kind of just like vague, like I don't put in every single color of Copic markers that I have used because that just gets really tedious to type up and it's really hard for me to remember or to keep track of the colors I use, especially when I'm in the zone of drawing. Like all I want to think about is coloring and not anything else, like if that makes any sense. But I will try if you guys want me to put in the Copic colors, I will try to devise like a new system in which I remember what colors I use because right now I hardly remember any of the colors that I have used for this illustration. 
Anyway, for this specific video or illustration, I keep mixing those two words up, I don't know why. I used Pilot GTAC 0.3 millimeter for the outlining of the illustration and Copic markers, of course, for coloring in. And I also used Faber-Castell Classic Colors in 48 pack and yeah. The third question is, do you prefer to render with colored pencils or Copic markers? This is actually a hard question because there are so many things that you can take into consideration when you're comparing two different types of media, like one, it's colored pencils, and the other one is Copic markers, like they're not of the same category. So there are probably four factors that I would take into consideration when choosing between Copic markers or colored pencils. The first factor is cost. I would say that colored pencils are a lot cheaper than Copic markers. Like for my case, the Faber-Castell Classic Color 48 pack of colored pencils, which I own, are student quality, but fairly decent in terms of creating artworks with them. I got those for like less than $20 and my Copic Chow markers I got for like $500. So you can definitely see the difference. The second factor, which is the time that it takes to create an illustration, I would say that Copic markers are less time consuming compared to colored pencils. And this kind of depends on the style. Like if I'm trying to create um, a really smooth render of an illustration, I would say that layering with colored pencils is so time consuming. Like that's probably one of the factors why I don't really use colored pencils that often in comparison to Copic markers. The third factor is style, and both of them you can use to create a smooth type of rendering for an illustration. However, I would say that the Copic markers are a lot better in terms of being able to create a variety of styles using one media. Like you can create some kind of watercolor effect with Copic markers, which you can't really achieve with colored pencils. And finally, the last factor is which one is a lot easier to use. I would say that they're actually relatively the same, probably because I've been working with both types of media for a while now, so I know how to use them. However, if you're kind of new to using Copic markers, it might be a little bit intimidating, but trust me, it's not. All you really need to do is practice working with them. Um, so to kind of answer which one I prefer, I would say that I prefer my Copic markers just because the time that it takes to finish an illustration is really important for me. So I usually gravitate towards Copic markers since they're a lot faster to color with. The fourth question is, do you draw every day? If not, how many times do you draw a week? There are kind of two ways for me to answer this. Like when I was a beginner, probably at around six, eight, 10, 12, all that, I was really young. I would draw every single day and more than once a day just because I had a lot of free time back then and I used to get bored quite often. So every time I was bored, I would draw and that was really often. Um, however, nowadays, especially that I've started university, I just have no time to draw for myself and no energy to draw. Like every time I would have free time, all I want to do is sleep or catch up on some sleep. So I don't draw every day. Um, if I do get to draw, it's probably for university. And that's probably the only time I really get to draw within that week because we have weekly assessments where we have to do like two drawings for that subject. So that's actually the only time that I get to draw. Um, and if I'm lucky, I will find time during the weekends where I try to draw at least two sketches, not exactly a full illustration. So that's about it for the questions. Let me know if you guys like how this video has been set out, especially the narration part, because it's a bit different. I mean, I answered questions and didn't necessarily talk about how I rendered the fabric for Mulan, which I usually do for my Disney princess videos. So I don't know. Let me know if you want me to return back into talking about how I did the illustration or if you want me to answer some questions that you have 
in relation to the illustration. So yeah, I'm just gonna leave it here. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you like this video and I will see you in my next one.